wrong with the world today? All these do-gooders out there trying to fix the world's problems by thinking happy thoughts. It's like I was telling my ex- You know, I was thinking this week as I was preparing, sometimes cupcakes can be radioactive, can't they? They can be toxic, especially if you eat too many. Um, as you can probably tell, I've had a couple in my life, so we like cupcakes. Well, we're glad you're here with us this morning, and um, I want to remind you of something real quick before we jump in. If you have your smart devices um, and you have the Version app either on your phone or on your tablet, um, if you go to the Version app and if you go to the home screen... Um, and you hit live, you can search for our sermons on, um, you can search for your, uh, the sermon on there right now, and all the notes are there, all of your scriptures are there, everything is right there in front of you. So if you um, you'd like to use your smart devices, we want to encourage you to do that. Um, it will help you follow along. You can also take notes in there, and in the whole bit. So um, we hope that uh, that's something that you like to do. We know a lot of, the, a lot of people like to do that, so we want to give you that opportunity. So today we're continuing on in our series, Radioactive. The first week we spoke about our thoughts and how toxic thoughts can change the course of our life. And remember we said something like this, so I think that is what I am. That's true in life, right? If you think that you're successful and you think that you're going to accomplish much in life, then oftentimes you do. But if you think that you're less, if you think that you're not as good as you could be, then oftentimes that is true of you. Last week, we spoke about toxic words. And we said that you will continue to move in the direction of your words. Whatever you say is the direction that you are moving in your life. And we spent a lot of time talking about the negative words that we say and how they can affect us. Remember last week we gave you an action step? Now, I, I'm not going to ask... Well, yeah, I am going to ask for a show of hands. How many of you put a rubber band on last week? Anybody? How do your, your wrist feel today? I know I got, I got a text message this week from somebody with a picture, and it was just a beet red wrist. I won't say who it was. I just enjoyed it. But the thing is this, is we sometimes have to reinforce ourselves with some form of action to get us to stop doing the things that we shouldn't do. I remember growing up when I was in high school, I had friends that had foul mouths, and so they began to do the, the wrist thing, and then they slowly had their rubber bands disappear because they didn't really want to stop. So sometimes we have to do something to reinforce change in our life. This week we're going to talk about the one thing that can rule our lives more than anything else if we let it. It can destroy relationships and it can destroy lives if we let it rule us. But before we jump into that, I want to ask if you would pray with me this morning. Father, we thank you for today. God, we thank you for the opportunity that we have to be here. Father, we thank you that you have given us the opportunity to live in a free country where we can worship freely. But God, I pray today that we not just worship freely, but we worship in spirit and in truth, and that the truth of your word would permeate. God, the truth of your word would change us from the inside out. Father, we love you so much. We thank you so much for all that you've done. And it's in your awesome and holy name that we pray. Amen. So what is it that can destroy a life or a relationship faster than anything else? What do you think it is? Anybody got any ideas? It's our emotions. Our emotions. Our toxic emotions can overrule and destroy quicker than even our words. 
Because our emotions begin to come out even before the words come out of our mouth. Remember last week we talked about how all of these things are going to build on top of one another. Right? We talked about how our toxic thoughts are where it starts. And then from our toxic thoughts we have toxic words. And then with our toxic words we begin to attribute them to toxic emotions. The things and the things that we feel and the feelings that we have towards one another. They can make us say or do or feel things that usually we would not allow in our lives. But when our emotions begin to rule, it changes who we really are. Jeremiah chapter 17 verse 9 says this. It says, The heart is deceitful above all things and beyond cure. Who can understand it? Our heart... Without God, our heart is deceitful. And even with God, our heart, who we are on the inside, there's sin. And it deceives us. It tells us things. It tells us that we're different than who we really are. Our heart and our emotions are deceptive. They're not always the truth. Let me ask you a question this morning. Have you ever let your emotions lead you to do something that you would never normally do? Anybody? Okay, so I'm going to tell a story on myself from when we were young married. Okay? Anybody in here ever gotten in a fight in their marriage? It's no elbows. Okay, or even in a relationship, because some of you have not been married. In a relationship, you've been in a fight, right? There was this one time where me and my wife got into a fight, and I got so mad, I punched the wall. Has anybody ever done that? Come on. I know I am not the only person in here that's done that. And I punched the wall, and I left the hole. And then I had to explain to anybody who saw it, what is that? Well, I'm dumb. I let my emotions rule. I let my emotions get the best of me. And I know many of us in this room can say, we may not have punched a wall. I had a buddy who used to punch brick walls. He was not the smartest guy I knew. Because brick walls don't give. The only thing that gives in that situation is usually a bone. But lots of people do lots of different things. I've known people that would go in their room and they take a pillow. Anybody ever done this? And go, ah, and scream as loud as they can into a pillow so nobody would hear them. Okay? Sometimes our emotions get the best of us. But the one thing that we as believers must understand is that our feelings are seldom honest with us they're seldom honest with us i i don't even remember what we were fighting about i'm sure karina probably could tell you no she can't remember either i remember what we were fighting about but i let my emotions get the best of me and my emotions were not telling me the truth they were not true see they are not true but we often hold to them as if they are true the world tells us that our emotions are the only thing that really matter and that they are the truth. You know that today in society, what is the one thing they tell us? There's no such thing as absolute truth, right? And they tell us that your truth can be different than your truth and your truth and your truth and your truth because there's no such thing as truth. Whatever's true for you is true. And the problem with that theory is that that means nothing is true. And so we cling to that. That's what the world says. The world says things like this. If you feel in love, you should get married. But the problem is, is then it switches on you. And they say things like this. If you don't feel in love anymore, you should get a divorce. See, that's all based on a feeling. It has nothing to do with what's based in reality and in truth. Now let me ask a question. Okay? Now, this is honesty moment. How many of you is, have always loved your spouse every day you've been married? Now, here's the thing. I love my spouse, but I don't always like her. And I'm sure that that holds way more true for her than me, because I'm sure there's many days that she wakes up and doesn't like me. See, love is not an emotion. Love is a choice. Love is truth. And if we allow our emotions to rule, then that doesn't work. See, 
We know that it's a choice. But I know, as well as you know, I don't wake up every day feeling in love. But that doesn't mean I don't choose it. See, the world will tell you that if you feel angry, then you should let your anger rule your decisions. And I believe that we should never, ever, ever react in haste. Now, I want to tell you this. That doesn't mean that I always live by that truth. Because sometimes our emotions overtake us. And that's why they're toxic. Because they begin to permeate. I tell people that I counsel with that if you feel like someone has done you wrong or has done something hurtful, then you need to wait 24 hours before you respond. Now, how good are we at that? Because I read Facebook. Typically, somebody says something on some kind of social media or an email or something that we don't like, and so what do we do? Oh, yeah, well, enter. And then you go, oh, my gosh, what did I just do? Because even in the moments sometimes that it takes us to type something back, we realize that we have let our emotions override truth. And if we will wait, it saves a lot of heartache and a lot of bridge building. Now that doesn't mean that we always take that advice. Here's the first truth I want you to understand this morning. It is this, truth number one. You can't always control toxic emotions but you don't have to let them control you. You can't always control the way that you feel. But you don't have to let those feelings rule what you do. Now here's some of the common emotions that we feel, okay? Anger. That's a pretty common one, right? We get angry about a lot of different things. And I will tell you this, I would... I would be more than willing to say that we should, we should have a lot of anger and a lot of harsh feelings about the fact that there are millions of people every day that die in this world without Jesus. We should be angry with the enemy. That there are millions of people right now that are sitting in a service like this under fear that they may die today. That should make us angry. Or that there's millions of people in the world today that don't have clean water or shoes, or food. That there will be millions of children die today from malnutrition. That should make us angry. Because we should want justice in situations like that. But you know what shouldn't make us angry? That somebody called me stupid. Who cares? See, the problem is, is we don't get angry about the things that we should get angry about. We get angry about the things that don't really matter. Another emotion is resentment. You just can't believe that they got that, or that that happened to them, and you let it eat at you. And you resent that person. How about envy? Now, here's the thing. Is it okay to look at somebody's nicer car, house, blah, whatever they may have, and say, man, that's really nice. That's not bad. But the problem is, is when we begin to envy that, and it begins to overtake our thoughts, and all we can think about is, man, I wish I had that. One that really kills us today is fear. Fear, we talked about fear a few weeks ago. Fear is debilitating. And if we constantly let the emotion of fear rule in us, it will destroy And sadness. Did you know that sadness and happiness are just emotions? They're just emotions. There's some days that I wake up sad. There's some days I wake up happy. But the choice that I have to make is, in spite of those things, I have to choose to have joy. Because I know what's coming. Here's the thing. We must understand that we can't control the feeling. But we can control how we respond to that feeling. So today, I'm going to talk about one specifically, one of these emotions that we just talked about, that probably, if we're all honest, and we're going we're gonna to say how honest we are here in just a moment, if we're all honest, we've all dealt with, okay? So if you've ever been angry, I want you to raise your hand. Liars. 
because I've seen you both be angry. So, okay. So today we're specifically going to talk about anger. But the thing I want you to understand is this can apply to any emotion that you feel. Okay? Remember, our feelings do what? They lie. Our feelings lie. Okay? I want everybody to say that. Our feelings lie. They lie to us. They don't tell us the truth because feelings are not real. All right? So if you have your Bibles, I want to encourage you to open up to Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4. Now remember, today we're specifically going to talk about anger, but this can apply in so many different ways. Okay? So in Ephesians chapter 4, we're going to read verses 26 and 27. Paul's writing to the church at Ephesus, and this is what he says. In Ephesians chapter 4, starting in verse 26, he says this. In your anger do not sin. Do not let the sun go down while you are still angry, and do not give the devil a foothold. Pretty short, right? Let's read it again. In your anger do not what? Sin. Do not let the sun go down while you are still angry, and do not give the who? A foothold. See, there's three, there's three things that toxic emotions do. There's three things that toxic emotions do. The first thing is toxic emotions lead us to do things we would not normally do. That's what they do. They lead us to do things we would not normally do. Understand that anger in and of itself is not a sin. To be angry is not a sin. Okay? It's not a sin to be angry. Jesus got angry. Do you remember when Jesus was in the temple and he started throwing tables and he made a whip and he started whipping things and he got nuts so crazy in there? It's not wrong to be angry. It's wrong with what we do when we are angry. It is how we act when we are angry. And that is what turns it into sin. See, it says right here, in your anger, do not sin. We often overreact to things and our emotions take us on a ride we wouldn't usually be on. Right? Am I the only one that knows this? Our emotions can just kill us. They rule us. Have you ever gotten in a fight with someone and you walk away and like 10 minutes later you're like, man, what just happened? Why did I do that? Why did I say that? Oh my goodness, what happened? We've all felt that way before. See, toxic emotions lead us to do things we wouldn't normally do. The second thing that they do is toxic emotions cause inner turmoil. It says, do not let the sun go down while you are still angry. See, when we hold on to toxic emotions, it can cause strife. In us. It can cause health issues in us. To sit and simmer and stew over something is very, very, very destructive. Have you ever been able to, unable to sleep because you were angry? Or fearful? Or had resentment? It happens. And the problem is this is when we start losing sleep, then what hope? What happens? Our emotions are heightened because we're tired. And then when our emotions are heightened because we're tired, then we're more apt to allow toxic emotions to rule our life. And so it's this vicious cycle that we get stuck in. And it causes inner turmoil. If you, have you ever had that feeling that you're so upset about something that you couldn't eat? It happens. The problem is, is when we allow these toxic emotions to rule us, it causes these problems within us. It is a known uh, fact in the medical community that worry and fear can cause you tons of medical problems. It can give you ulcers. It can cause all kinds of things. Because we are allowing our emotions to rule. But the last the last thing is this. Toxic emotions give Satan an area to enter through. It says right here, do not let this, or it says, and do not give the devil a foothold. See, Satan sees this as a weakness in our armor. 
He sees this as a way for the enemy to get in and wreak havoc in our lives. Because if we allow our emotions to rule, then there's a weakness within us. And Satan is going to exploit that weakness at every turn. If you struggle with anger, then he's going to bring things into your life that are going to make you angry. If you struggle with envy, then your neighbor's going to get a nicer car than you have. If you struggle with being sad, then sad things are going to happen and you're going to be bent towards those things. Because he's going to use every weakness he can find in you to exploit you and destroy. See, we are giving an invitation to come in and destroy and we must be against our guard. You know, there's a guy that we read about in the book of Judges that, that really let his emotions be king. And it was the guy by the name of Samson. Now, if you don't know the story of Samson, I want to encourage you to look in the book of Judges. But he, amount, he allowed his emotion of lust to rule his life. If you've read the story of Samson, you understand that one day Samson is out with his family. And if you don't know the story of Samson, Samson was a Levite. He wasn't supposed to cut his hair. He wasn't supposed to touch dead things. He wasn't supposed to drink wine. There's all these things that Levites are not supposed to do. And so Samson was a Levite. And God had set him apart to do miraculous things. But Samson knew that God set him apart to do miraculous things. And his emotions got the best of him. He thought he was the greatest. You remember Muhammad Ali? I am the greatest. That's how Samson thought about himself. But one day he's with his parents and he sees a woman that he's not supposed to be married to. And he looks at his mom and dad and goes, I want her. Go get her for me. So they do. He got married because he was lusting after her. And then later on in his life, after his first wife died, his second wife comes along. And he's lusting after her, and she ends up being his demise. Because he allowed his emotions to rule. He knew who God made him to be, but he allowed his emotions to get the best of him. So the question is this, how do we overcome toxic emotions? How do we overcome toxic emotions? There's two ways, okay? The first way is this. We refuse to allow toxic emotions to rule. We refuse to allow toxic emotions to rule. Now, you may be saying, how do we do that? That's, that's pretty tough. You're right, it is. But in Proverbs chapter 4, verses 23 and 24, we read this last week and it applies today too. And it says this, Above all else, guard your heart, for everything you do flows from it. And keep your mouth free of perversity and keep ter- corrupt talk far from your lips. Remember we talked about Jeremiah 17, 9? It says the heart is deceitful above all else. In the book of Proverbs, we understand that we have to guard our heart. For our heart is where our emotions come from. So we must guard that. We must not allow them to rule. We must not allow our hearts to rule and run our lives. Our heart is a liar. And it wants what it wants and not always what God wants. Our emotions don't always want God's best for us. In Philippians chapter 4, verses 6 through 7, it says this Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And then the peace of God will transcend all understanding and will guard your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus. Jesus said like this, But the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things. And I will remind you of everything I have said to you. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. We cannot allow toxic emotions to rule us. When we allow fear and anxiety and anger to rule, we can't be who God really desires for us to be. But when we guard our hearts with the truth, we can overcome anything that the enemy might throw at us. We can't allow our emotions to be our king. See, the thing is, is the one emotion that most people in the world struggle with today is anger. We really like to stew. And we like to think of things to say or actions to perform to retaliate over the way that we feel. 
You ever gotten in a fight with someone or a disagreement, and you leave, and you start going, man, I wish I would have said that. Right? Man, why didn't I think of that? Ooh, that would have been a good one. See, we're allowing our emotions to rule, not the truth. I want to say something today that I said last week and the week before, and is this. We must remember, Satan is the enemy, not us. Satan is the enemy, not us. We, together, are not the enemy. Satan is. And he wants to do everything he can to destroy relationships. But you want to know the one place he wants to destroy the relationships the most? Is in the church. Because if he can get the church fighting amongst each other, then the world's just going to go, I don't want none of that. That's why our emotions are toxic. See, the reality is, is we like to splash around in the radioactive slop of our emotions. We enjoy it. We almost find some kind of crazy liking of wallowing in something that's not really for us. But the one thing we really like to do is we like to make excuses about why we allow this to happen. We say things like this, well, I just have a short fuse. Or we say things like this. This is just who I am, so everyone just has to deal with it. Or, ladies, I'm going to make all of you mad in this room. I know it's coming. But sometimes, sometimes I hear ladies say, well, I just, it's PMS. (laughs) And sometimes men, we're like, I had a bad day at work. Okay? Right? We all have an emotions. The problem is, is we can make excuse after excuse after excuse after excuse about why we allow our emotions to rule, but it's not the truth. Truth number two is this. We must let our thoughts rule our emotions and not vice versa. We must let our thoughts, we know who God is and we know what he's done for us and we know the thoughts that he has for us and we know the plans he has for us. But the problem is, is we allow our, our emotions to rule and make us do things that we wouldn't normally do. And the reality is this, we need to not allow our emotions to rule. We need to let the truth rule so that our emotions stay under control. Now, Is that easy? Is it? Absolutely not. We must deal with the truth that our emotions will deceive us. And if we always focus on the here and the now, we will never see the greatness that is to come. In the book of Hebrews, the writer writes this. He says in the the New Living Translation, he says, Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a huge crowd of witnesses to the life of faith, let us strip off every weight that slows us down, especially the sin that so easily trips us up. And let us run with endurance the race God has set before us. We do this by keeping our eyes on Jesus, the champion who initiates and perfects our faith. Because of the joy awaiting him, he endured the cross, disregarding its shame. Now he was seated in the place of honor besides God's throne. Think of all the hostility he endured from sinful people. Then you won't become weary and give up. After all, you have not given your lives in your struggle against sin. He says that we need to set our eyes on the things above and not on the things below. That we need to remember who the perfecter of our faith is. And it is Jesus and we must focus on Him. We must keep our eyes on Him and not the battles set before us. We must understand battles are simply distractions placed there by the enemy so that we don't do what God wants us to do. Battles are simply distractions placed there by the enemy. We must constantly remind ourselves of that. And the last thing to overcome this is we must bring our struggles into the light. We must bring our struggles into the light. 
We can't continue to try and fight the struggle alone, church. We can't. This has not, is not, and will not be successful. Now, we're going to have a little honesty here this morning. And some of you may struggle with this, being honest about this, and if you do, that's okay. But I want to ask you an honest question. How many of you in this room, and I include myself, have a sin in your life that you struggle with that you don't want anybody else to know about? Church, the reality is this. The only way to overcome sin is to bring it into the light. That's the only way. We have to bring it into the light. We have to let the light of God's presence overwhelm it. We must be honest and deal with the struggle head on and with help at our side. The problem is this, is we're so afraid that someone might judge us. We're so afraid that someone might say, well, look at that guy. Well, I stand here as a man before you to tell you right now that I struggle with sin in my life. And I will not judge you. Because he who has been forgiven much, forgives much. And he who has been shown grace, shows grace. And he who has received mercy, gives mercy. And that's the truth. See, in James chapter 5, James the brother of Jesus gives us a very explicit way for us to handle the sin that so easily entangles And he says this, starting in verse 13. Is any among you in trouble? Let them pray. Is anyone happy? Let them sing songs of praise. Is anyone among you sick? Let them call the elders of the church to pray over them and anoint them with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer offered in faith will make the sick person well. And the Lord will raise them up. And if they have sinned, they will be forgiven. And therefore, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be what? What? Therefore, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. It is effective. And it is powerful. We honestly don't believe the Bible to be true in our lives. Because if we did, we would do this on a regular basis. We would allow people into our lives to be real with them and share with them the struggles that we had so that we can hold one another up. The problem is this, church. The only army that shoots his own is the church. we got to stop it. We must hold one another up. Because I'm here to tell you right now, no one in the world will hold you up. Because they're just waiting for you to fail. And I don't know about you, but I'm ready to lay down my weapon. And I'm ready to hit my knees with someone today. See, when we are willing to confess, or when we are unwilling to confess, it keeps us bound up in our sin. When we bring it into the light... There's no longer anything to hide. And we have freedom unlike any freedom we've ever felt before. See, in Galatians chapter 5, verse 1, it says this, For it is for freedom that Christ set us free, so that we no longer had to be a slave to sin. We could be a slave to a righteous life. Our sin holds us captive. And it destroys us from the inside out. See, but not everyone is ready to hear the truth. I want to I challenge you today. Be honest with someone in your life. Don't let sin be your master anymore. I 
heard it said like this. Holding a grudge and being angry with someone is like letting someone have free rent in your head. Holding a grudge and being angry with someone is like letting them have free rent in your head. Because you allow them to control your thoughts and your actions. I want to say what I said a few weeks ago. If everyone thought about you as much as they, you think they think about you, then they would never think about anything else but you. See, the problem here is that we have allowed our sin to control for too long. I heard a story this week of a young girl. She was struggling with anger in her life. She went to her pastor and she said, Pastor, I just don't know what to do. She goes, it's like I've got these two dogs that are fighting inside of me. One tells me to stop, deal, stop being angry, and the other one is continuing to tell me it's okay to be angry, and they're fighting each other, and I don't know what to do. And the pastor asked a very simple question, and he said this, which dog are you feeding? Because if you stop feeding something after a while, it's going to do what? die. So my challenge to you this morning is this. You need to decide what dog you're feeding and which one needs to die. Maybe it's anger, resentment, hostility, fear, worry. Let today be the day that you bring the sin into the light and stop feeding the dog doesn't need to be fed. Today we're going to sing our song of invitation and decision. Pretty interesting sometimes how God works. Because the words of this song are simply this. I give you my heart. I give you my soul. I live for you alone. <laughs> so here's the thing, church. Today it's the day. Today's the day to release it. Today is the day to bring it to the light, stop feeding the dog, and find someone to lock arms with and go with together. This morning, if you've come and you need to accept Jesus for the first time, if you've never said, God, I want you to be the Lord of my life and I want today to be that day, then I pray right now that you will begin to feel the boldness from the Holy Spirit to move towards Him because He's ready and waiting. Or if today you simply want to say this, I want to join this church family, I want to be part of what we're doing at First Christian Church, then we want to invite you to come. Or this morning, I want to invite you to move if you're ready to bring something to light. If it's time. And I know for some of you this word I'm about to say probably scares you, but the reality is, is that there's people in this room right now that are struggling with pornography, and I want you to bring it to light today. Because you will never be free until you lay it before the foot of the cross. Or there may be someone in here today that struggles with anger. Let today be the day that you begin to work through that and walk through that so that God can free you from that. Whatever it is, there's no better day to bring it to the light than today. So we want to pray with you. So if you have a decision to make this morning, we want to invite you to come as we stand and as we sing our song of invitation and decision this morning.